So when you look at the history of soybean production, you want to look at how things perform over time, right? If you look at history, it's a way of kind of predicting the future, and so that's why we look back in history. Uh, sometimes when we think about it, it's not just last season, it's multiple seasons, especially if you think about you're in a corn-soybean rotation. Last year's crop was likely corn in your situation, so you need to go back even two years to see what are some of the historical things that have occurred in the soybean cycle. So in terms of variety selection, that is the top. Uh, that, that is the top decision that we need to make in our production year in and year out. So doing the homework now, uh, past, you know, you look at September field days, see how they performed. If you look at variety trials, just what's supposedly the best from each company, there can be a 10 bushel swing easily from top to bottom. There can be up to 15 bushel. So hey, you want to make the bottom line, let's make the, those good decisions. So what I'm looking at in particular is yield potential as well as yield consistency. We don't just necessarily want the top, we want something that's going to consistently be at the top. And so that's where we look at it over a number of locations or growing environments. Uh, so once we kind of hit that mark, then it goes through, okay, what, what's my history been in this field? And then also the other part that I didn't mention was to kind of spread your risk in terms of maturity groups uh, with uh, the growing season. So to spread that risk in terms of having a half to full unit difference in maturity really helps us in that regard. And then secondly, it helps us in terms of managing our harvest load. You need to have good soil testing over the years. So then again, you've got how does this field respond from year to year? and then you can make those changes. It's a foundation, there's no doubt about it. If you don't have that, again, it's kind of going into a test without studying. Our soybeans, uh, they're doing a lot more than they used to. They're doing a lot more later in the season in terms of uh, phosphorus uptake, nitrogen, and sulfur in particular, uh, post their, their full seed stage. So let's make sure the fertility level is there and adequate. IPM, that's an area that we want to make sure that we still have all the tools in the toolkit. Uh, so going forward, you think about uh, any of the insect levels that we're looking at, disease uh, thresholds, all that comes into play so then we can have these tools later. So I want to go out there scouting. That's, that's the biggest thing to really know what's going on. It's intentional soybean management. So weed pressures, you think about how we've had glyphosate resistance coming in for a number of years. We've got some other resistance coming in now from PPOs. And so we certainly want to look at how have our herbicide programs worked in the past, so in the soybean cycle, but then also the corn cycle or any other uh, crop that's in there to say, okay, do we have that one patch that's now not, not a patch, but it's the whole field or half the field, and so, okay, we need to think about how do we adjust our plans. The histories, uh, it's uh, data in, data out, right? You know, if you got poor data going in, guess what? The decision going out is going to be pretty poor as well. And so doing the homework, again, go back to it feels like you're in school, but you need to do a good job of kind of assessing it, not just getting the cliff notes, but going down a little bit deeper from time to time. Visit cropscience.bear.us and search soybean yields to learn more about how additional best management practices can help soybean growers secure the best yields and return on investment.